thank you very much for joining me here today. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Let's start with the basics. Um, what are tailings dams and what are they needed for? Tailings is uh, a waste product that results after you have taken the metal out of the ground up. And it's very fine material. It's uh, like a beach sand mm -hmm. and even finer. We are so far placing most of the tailings uh, in a watery form that we would call slurry. We don't really know how many there are. Uh, we know that China has published numbers of 8,000 in China. Um, and when we start looking at adding to that the major mining countries, mm. um, I think we're probably looking in the order of about 10,000. Can companies get around them or are they necessary f for, for the operations? Well, yes. At, at this point, we don't really have another way of getting the metal right. out of the rock mm. than uh, grinding it quite fine. And in many cases, we use a water-based process. And so we really cannot get away from tailings as a waste product mm. right now. And so this is going to be a challenge and, and it is and it has been a challenge mm. for quite a while. Is the main problem in the design or in the execution of tailing stamps? I think there are problems in both of them. Mm. And you know, when we look at failures such as uh, Mount Pali and and also some of the other failures that happened since 2014 when, mm. when that failed. It is clear that the science behind these failures uh, is well known. It often is an issue that deals with uh, the site conditions, understanding the site conditions, and carefully designing for those site conditions. Now, is that an issue that is also dependent on, for instance, the budgets mm -hmm. that are available at the time of the original design, and therefore the limitations on having a, a very large, expansive site investigation program? Uh, and one never really understands those details. But, but I think it's, it's always important for the designers to ask the hard questions and to keep probing and make sure that we understand it as best as we can. I mean, it is evident that there is an inherent risk in these facilities, but who is responsible for regulating, monitoring the safety of tailings? When we look at the regulation side, clearly we have uh, regulatory frameworks in, in the various jurisdictions. Um, those frameworks are all really different from each other. Mm. For instance, when we look at uh, Canada, the US, Australia, we find that uh, the regulatory frameworks are really set up by jurisdictions, provinces in Canada, states in the US and in Australia. And so there are very few federal level or national level regulations in those countries. Uh, monitoring is done by the company there's a lot of attention being paid to monitoring. Right now there's some major research uh, occurring in Chile in terms of uh, transparent mo monitoring mm. of tailings facilities. So, so there's a lot of attention being paid to that. Ultimately, who's responsible for all of this? It is the owner of the facility. Mm. I think that, that has uh, been made very clear 
both after the Mount Polly failure mm. by, by the chief inspector's report on that failure. The chief mining inspector of BC issued a report basically indicating that despite all the advice from engineers, it's ultimately the responsibility of the mining company to, uh, to make sure that tailings facilities are safe and stable. With climate change and affecting rain patterns, mm -hmm. uh, soils, um, stability of slopes, are we going to see uh, more tailings than accidents? Well, uh, it, it's interesting. I, I just want to react a little bit to Please. the term accident because uh, I think more and more we refer to these as incidents because in many cases uh, they happened and one wonders whether it was really an accident that they happened or whether it was sort of coming down the line in any case. Mm. But the, uh, the issue around climate change clearly has to do with much larger storms. I think that's, that's one of the issues uh, that's being considered right mm. now in all designs as well in operations. Is looking, we're looking very hard at the impacts, potential impacts of climate change. We will learn f more as we move along. Will we see more failures? I'm optimistic that you know, we, are, we, we are paying attention to climate change and, and people are taking that into account in the designs. And so we're not just turning away and, and, and forgetting about it. So uh, I, I hope that we, we can really work along that area very well. Thank you very much for joining me today. You're welcome.